Hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I'm having a fantastic day. I pray that you are. God is good. He's on the throne. He's alive and well. He's moving by his spirit. Souls are being saved. Hearts are being changed. People are being delivered. Families are being put back together. Praise God. Moms are being touched. Dads are being touched. Children are getting saved. Praise the Lord. The news is not always uh, negative. Good things are happening. Now, the nightly news and the networks don't report on the good things. But I'm here to tell you, in the words of the old Christian song, God is moving by his spirit, moving throughout the world, signs and wonders. God is using and then I heard him say, move, oh God, in me. So I'm grateful today and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And I hope, I hope that you have made your calling and your election sure. I hope those who are saved, the born again who are out there, I hope that you are settled in knowing what is right and what is wrong. And I pray that you tune in to uh, messages that we preach and others that, that strengthen your resolve to stand on the word of God and not be swayed by the enemy. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, the world is going to try to change your mind. The world is going to try to buy you. The world is going to try to pull you away from Jesus Christ and, uh, and from your Christian convictions. And they're trying to come up with a, a, a new style of Christianity, to be honest, Brother Gary. They're trying to come up with a Christianity that lets you be everything and a Christian. Oh, by the way, there. I started to mention some denomination where people actually believe that now, that you can cuss, party, drink, do whatever you want, and still be saved. Well, I'm here to tell you, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people on the day of judgment, and a lot of disappointed people the moment they die and stand before the Lord, and Jesus Christ looks at them and said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Now, you know, from time to time, I have to talk about things, and I don't talk about things that are not uh, public or fair game put out there. And I've got to revisit something because a young lady whom I have much respect for, now I want to just mention off the top, uh, she, she is revered in her field. Very few people, if any has a voice that is superior to hers, and uh, and I uh, thank God for her, her ministry, uh, her, her preaching, her teaching, her singing, and uh, uh, her, the stand that she uh, made around 2016 or so as she was preaching to her congregation, and she was preaching biblical truth, biblical truth. She was agreeing with God. She's agreeing with the God of the Bible, preaching the truth, declaring uh, that homosexuality, yes, and lesbian, lesbianism is wrong, but that they can be delivered. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, that was no... Uh, uh, a use of offensive words. There was no slang. Um, uh, 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 she just told the truth. And oh my, the devil came after her and uh, we got a chance to uh, talk with her and uh, just, I, I, I was just honored to stand shoulder to shoulder with her doing that battle. I know what it's like, as you as you well know. I know what it's like to have to contend with these public battles and more often than not have to stand alone. But I'm never alone. Paul says, uh, at my first answer, all men uh, forsook me, and uh, uh, but God was with me. And I've learned, my friends, that if God is with you, he's more than the world against you. But apparently something uh, happened uh, to uh, this wonderful woman of God. And it, since it is public, since it is public, I, I can talk about it. Uh, the, the, the great Kim Burrell, the great singer, 
a preacher, an extraordinary young lady. I got a chance to just, we just mouth greetings to each other just a few weeks ago at the National Women's Convention of the Church of God in Christ. She's a delightful lady, and I thank the world of her and have much respect for this woman of God. So you can imagine my disappointment as I uh, read these uh, headlines. As a matter of fact, I was actually, uh, Brother Gary, I was riding my bike and uh, I had on my, my uh, sports watch. And that watch is connected to, to my phone. And uh, uh, I get uh, news comes up. And the thing came up on my watch, not this one, on the sports watch that I was wearing. And... Uh, and I, I, I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. So I went to the phone uh, uh, the first chance I got and, and, and pulled it up. And lo and behold, uh, I saw this. It says gospel singer Kim Burrell seeks peace and apologizes to the LBGTQ plus community for past remarks. This is the headlines. Uh, gospel singer Kim Burrell is apologizing in a very public way to the LGBTQ plus community after uh, hopping online over the years to spread harsh and homophobic themed remarks. So um, I don't know what a harsh homophobic theme remark is. I, I will say this, that Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. has never throughout my entire ministerial career uttered a homophobic remark. Now, I imagine that means <laughs> me, my saying that has caused some of you to fall out of your seat. But I don't let the, the world label uh, my remarks when I'm agreeing with the Bible. Uh, the, the, the term homophobic was a made up term by a psychologist who's dead now. He made it up and, uh, and he made it up because his friends weren't comfortable with him bringing some homosexuals to a party. And so he coined the phrase homophobia and we treat it like it's an actual phobia. Well, Patrick Wooden, Bishop Wooden here doesn't play that game. I don't uh, participate. I, amen. Uh, and I'm not going to. I do not think that anyone is uttering a homophobic remark. A phobia is an unreasonable fear. And they're accusing us, you know, they don't, you can't disagree with homosexuality without being accused of being homophobic. Well, what, I just want to know, Bishop, what, what is it that you're afraid of? Nothing. It's just wrong. And I want to see people delivered. That's all. Not a homophobic remark. So she apologizes for the homophobic remark. Now, uh, I got a question that I'm going to ask you in just a few minutes, though. And I want you, when you see this, I want you to get online and answer the question. While using her platform for love and unity... Kim Burrell took to the stage at the 2024 Stella Awards over the weekend to apologize to the LBGTQ plus community while accepting the Aretha Franklin Icon Award. By the way, Aretha Franklin, uh, over her 50 year musical career, do you not know that her last live, her last public performance uh, back in 2017, she was uh, doing a performance for Elton John. She was in the throes of uh, illness, and uh, uh, she did it. Uh, she sung for Elton John at the. Uh, she sang for John at the annual AIDS Foundation Gala in 2017. Sadly, it would ultimately turn out to be Aretha's final live public show, but it was a powerful performance that brought uh, the audience, including Elton John, to tears. Yeah, they, they were in tears when they looked at how sick she was, and she's singing, uh, say a little prayer for you. And uh, I, I watched it. I, I've, I've seen clips of it, 
And uh, I, I thought Aretha Franklin just uh, a superb career, a superb singer. But my heart went out to her. There she is uh, performing to raise money for the AIDS Foundation. And I'm not against raising money for any foundation to help people who are sick. But if you uh, are raising money for a foundation, but at the same time you're endorsing the very behavior that creates uh, that causes the sickness in the first place. Now, to me, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. That, that's like telling someone, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God heal you of your high blood pressure. And and as soon as you finish praying, you, you bring them a plate full of bacon, a plate full of pork, a plate full of everything that they shouldn't be eating. They're eating stuff that's high in sodium, things that's just against them. But you're saying, I want to raise money to try to help them out because uh, uh, I want to uh, help them live. But they're not going to change their behavior at all. Now, at an Elton John fundraiser uh, for the AIDS Foundation, a gala like that, you would get run out of town if you would get up and say, you know, one of the things that would keep this from spreading all together, all together would be if we change our behavior. But if you say that, you're going to get tarred and feathered. We're in a day now where you can't tell the truth. Now back to this, back to this. I'm talking fast because I don't want to go too long. This is an invite for you to come to meet me tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. But listen, she gets the Aretha Franklin Icon Award. And during her speech, do you think maybe someone told her to do it since this was Aretha's uh, last performance? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Kim Burrell said she hopes uh, to best use this moment to build a bridge while seeking peace with the LGBTQ plus community. Build a bridge? Why are we told in the Bible to build a bridge to sin. That's not a part of uh, the doctrine. As a matter of fact, God said to the prophet Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, I just happen to have it right here, chapter 15 and verse 19. He said, therefore, thus saith the Lord, said to the prophet Jeremiah, if thou return, that is, if you uh, will uh, get yourself together, shake off the distrust. Then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou will take forth the precious from the vow, thou shalt be as my voice. Let them return to thee, but return not thou to them. Now that's Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 19. God says to the prophet Jeremiah, they need to return to you. They're the ones who are wrong. He said, you need to separate the precious from the vile. The apostle Paul says in the New Testament, oh my, and the, Bi the Bible is right, where he says that we're to come out uh, from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And God says, I will receive you right here, right here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore come you, come you out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And look at this, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. What is this build a bridge stuff? How do you seek peace with sin? How do you do it? Now, if we're going to seek peace, are you saying that we're going to seek peace with the LGBTQ community? Now, Paul says uh, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11, and such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So, uh, are you saying that we're supposed to find a way to live in peace?
peace. Now, no one is suggesting, Brother Gary, no one is suggesting that we fight, kick, shoot, cut, uh, stab uh, anyone of any community. By the way, uh, law enforcement would tell you nine times out of ten when you find a member of that community that's been stabbed and oh, they call it overkill, that's infighting amongst themselves. Because a lot of those men, the, the, a lot of those guys, see, you got to remember they're still men. You got the strength of a man and the temperament of a woman. And so when they get mad, they go too far. So that's what happens. So now she's saying that we should seek peace. Well, how, how, how is that going to be peace? Because if you tell a member of the community that, that they need to be saved, they get mad. If you tell them Jesus died for them to deliver them, they get mad. They don't mind uh, being told that Jesus died to save them as long as you don't suggest that they have to come out of that lifestyle. Because if they come out of the lifestyle, then they're no longer a part of the community. So why are we trying to build a bridge and uh, seeking peace with the LBGTQ plus community? Kim Burrell began, she began, listen to this. This is according to this. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. According to this article, I want to apologize to the LBGTQ community. Let's give them a great round of applause. For what? For what? Now, mind you, Brother Lee, this is at the... Stella Awards. Now, I could be wrong. In the Stella Awards, an award show to honor gospel music? <laughs> These people are messed up, man. I mean, I, I, I could see if we were at the, uh, the Grammys, you know, uh, at the Hip Hop Awards, uh, maybe the Country Music Awards, but the Stellas. Where, where all the singers are supposed to be Christians. And, and maybe maybe they've changed that. But anyway, she's at the Stella. So at the Stella Awards. At the Stella Awards. It sounds like the stupid awards. At the Stella Awards, we're told to give them a big round of applause. We want them to have strength and to sincerely know that that we must do the work to embrace all of God's people and show forth love, his love to everyone. Amen. I mean, OK, but uh, how is that uh, apologizing? I, I if, if, if I remember you correctly, uh, uh, Sister Burrell, Pastor Burrell, Sister Kim, if I remember you correctly, you know, and, and I know my opinion doesn't matter, but if I remember you correctly, the things that you said uh, in 2016, uh, you were dead on it. You were slap dab in the middle of the word of God. And maybe maybe it was something else that you said that, that you're apologizing for. But I, I remember I remember that uh, a dear friend, a mutual friend of ours. He's in heaven now. Uh, uh, the Apostle Al Jones. I loved Al and Al loved me and Al loved you. And Al was quite a man of God. He's in heaven now. Al, me, Al gave me, uh, connected us and we were able to talk. And um, you did a great job. You, you made your stand preaching to your congregation. And how dare these people? You're preaching to your church, to your audience. You're telling the truth. And then everybody tries to come against you. You said, and this thing goes on, I got to wrap this up. Tonight, I hope this award and this moment can be the beginning of a bridge building and listening to each other as we follow peace with all men and develop the character of God, which requires uh, seeing God. Well, it sounds like to me you were trying to quote a little bit of Hebrews uh, I guess it's 12 uh, and 14, uh, where it says, uh, and follow peace with all men. But I noticed you said, the next part, you said develop the character of God. No, Hebrews 12, 14 says, follow peace with all men and holiness. 
<laughs> without which no man shall see the Lord and the character of God is being holy and there's nothing holy about being a member of the LBGTQ plus community. You can't be holy and walk in the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm wrapping this up, uh, but uh, concerning apologizing, I have here in my hand a letter written by a man in his 60s. This man says, I watched YouTube. I watch YouTube sometimes. He gives his age. I will not tell you where he's from. Um, he says, but I get around good for my age. And I watch YouTube at times and ran into yours truly. He puts here, Mr. Wooden. And I like uh, what I was hearing, uh, from, from you hearing from me. And, uh, and I would like to, uh, to I like, he likes the preaching and wants to know more about us. So he begins to tell his story at the age of 11 years uh, old. He was sent by his parents to church to work in the pastor's office on a Saturday, you know, doing little things in the church. I know I'm going long, but listen to me now. And this man was 11, 11, 11 years old. And at the age of 11, the preacher tried to kiss him. And he knew at the age of 11, and the preacher was a male, he knew that at the, at the age of 11 that it was wrong. He left that church. He told his parents. He told mom and dad. The preacher was blessed that dad didn't go down there and kill him. And for 58 years, he has not set foot in another church because he believes that all preachers are perverts until he came across yours truly on YouTube preaching the word of God. Now I got a question for Kim Burrell and I got a question for all of you out there who may have a problem with what I'm saying. Who's going to apologize to him? Who's going to say you should not have had, you should not have suffered that trauma as an 11 year old from a homosexual preacher, a predator? Who's going to apologize to him? Who's going to apologize to the overwhelming number of people in the LBGTQ plus community who were turned out? I notice that we don't hear apologies coming from them. People call people like me everything but a child of God for saying things like this. And I hope I don't get deplatformed. I'm not using any slang. I'm not saying anything. I'm not, I'm, I'm using proper terms. <laughs> I've read the story. The letter is right here. Who's going to apologize? I just want to say to the saints of God, to Sister Burrell and to others, I will say then, say now what I said to them, said then, 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse 12 and down, verse 21 and down, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't do it. Can't have it both ways. Can't be on both sides. You can't recreate Christianity. We're called to be the light of the world, not a bridge to darkness. How are you going to be a bridge? Paul says uh, there's no fellowship between light and darkness. Where you ask, what fellowship hath light with darkness? What communion uh, do these things have together? None. None. 
So uh, I want to say to the body of Christ, uh, I mean, it, listen, I'm closing with this one. You can tell I'm a holiness preacher. That's my third close. I just want to say this. Paul says, uh, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And he was talking about all of the immorality and the wickedness that was going on in the church at Corinth. He says, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what peace, what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? So what do you mean with this being in the Bible? What kind of bridge are we supposed to build? No, we're supposed to come out from among them. Show them the difference. Show them the difference in being born again and living a holy life. Lovingly showing them the difference. Amen. Being kind, being sweet, but not apologizing. Not taking your biblical stand back. As for me, I'm sticking with the scripture. And I want to invite you tonight to come here tonight for the word of the Lord that's going to be preached at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Now tonight, in for the full disclosure, I will be in Lubbock, Texas, preaching the word of God. But we will be having service right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And a strong preacher is going to deliver the word of the Lord without compromise. And yours truly will be back in place preaching the word of God right here, if it's the Lord's will, this coming Sunday. Now, I love you. I love you. But don't get it twisted. Don't get confused. Don't go to shaking and rocking. Don't be afraid. Holiness is right. And God have not called us to apologize to the world. God have not called us to tell the world I'm sorry for taking the biblical stand and the biblical position. God have called us to stand on his word. And if we die standing on his word, so be it. But we're called to stand on God's holy word. I tell you what, I bet you this, the Bible will act outlast the Stella Awards. God bless. <laughs>